This is PBS. Voices and Visions examines the great literary works of American writers. In 1855, a book appeared which changed the course of world literature. It was unlike any other book that had ever been published. A new species, organic like its title, Leaves of Grass. Have you reckoned a thousand acres much? Have you reckoned the earth much? Have you practiced so long to learn to read? Have you felt so proud to get at the meaning of poems? Stop this day and night with me, and you shall possess the origin of all poems. Join us tonight at 10 on 24, Voices and Visions. Welcome to your city colleges. I'm Dr. Edward Mazur, Director of the Intergovernmental Executive Development Program and a faculty member at Harold Washington College. In this program, we will be discussing the Intergovernmental Executive Development Program. My guests are Maritza Marrero, the first Deputy Commissioner of Personnel of the City of Chicago and a 1984 graduate of the program, David Eubanks, the Chief Greenway Planner of the Cook County Forest Preserve District and a 1991 graduate of the program, and Gwenda Pulpus, co-director of the program and a principal personnel analyst for the City of Chicago. I'd like to begin the discussion, Maritza, by asking you to describe the relationship between the City Colleges of Chicago, and particularly now the Harold Washington College and the Department of Personnel and the training component of which uh, you are in charge of? Well, as you mentioned, you, we've had a partnership with the city colleges for 25 years or more now. And uh, most recently in our partnership, we, the city of Chicago, acquired one of your computer labs so that we are now able to offer com uh, various types of computer training to city employees. And we have city of Chicago professors teaching those classes. And in addition, we, have, we are now offering college credit courses for city employees at our training facility. They are offered in the evening, and our first class started last night. And what we're trying to do is offer college-level courses that people can use if they wanted to continue on to further their education, and hopefully um, they will take advantage of it. And the response? The response to all of this has been great. We have waiting lists, as a matter of fact. Um, computer technology, as you know, is one of the areas that we in the city really um, need to learn more about. And so our classes, as I said, ha we have waiting lists. And also our college credit classes that we're offering at night were booked. So we have, there's a lot of interest. In, on the part of city employees to attend the different uh, things that we offer in conjunction with city colleges. Well, as a faculty member who works with you and uh, on behalf of other faculty members, I'm sure they'll be very happy to hear that uh, there are city employees who are taking these college credit classes. Gwenda, I'd like to ask you about the um, goals and the purpose of the Intergovernmental Executive Development Program. When we look at it, I guess, from a, a broad perspective, bottom line is how can we equip the senior managers and junior managers to better handle the challenges that they face uh, working in the public sector. So it's a matter of refining and providing opportunities for them to interact and learn from one another and so that they can enhance their management capability. 
Um, more specifically, though, we offer opportunities for learning how to effectively utilize group process. Um, there's opportunities to better understand your own management style and approach, to understand the management style and approach of others, and to um, look at how you can refine your interpersonal skills as well as your management skills. Thank you. And Dave, you were a participant in the program when you were an employee of the Department of Streets and Sanitation uh, right. for the city of Chicago. Mm -hmm. But now you've moved over to another government uh, body, the uh, Forest Preserve District of Cook County. Would you like to share with us uh, how you were recruited for the program, how you learned about the program? I'd be happy to. Um, when I was with the city in, back in 1991, I worked for Streets and Sanitation for the Commissioner's Office working on uh, solid waste management issues and recycling issues uh, as a chief research analyst. And the, uh, uh, the current commissioner at that time, Commissioner Ray Kacharis, thought that uh, he'd like to really cultivate his staff um, related to, <clears throat> and the department staff related to, uh, their team building skills, uh, what they could do in terms of um, uh, of furthering the agenda of, of uh, streets and sanitation to offer better programs and uh, to get some management experience. And I was a, a relatively new professional in my career, and uh, he basically identified me, and it was really an honor to, to come to the class, uh, being kind of uh, in a younger level position, uh, not being a first deputy commissioner or anything. Uh, and uh, it worked out very well for me, and it's really led, uh, led me into higher positions of, of management and gave me that kind of background and training, as well as just lear learning uh, who's who in city government. You really can network and, and cooperate from a lot of different uh, city agencies and outside of the city as well, other governments. And I guess that's why they call it intergovernmental. It's very good. Um, Maritza, perhaps you could share with us, how are people recruited for the program? And who is the, uh, or what level of uh, personnel is the program directed at? Well, I consider the program a fast-track type of program. Usually we accept people that are in mid or upper level management jobs. Um, oftentimes we try and mix the classes with uh, um, people who have been on a while and those that are new to government. And um, we usually recruit our people through invitations. We extend invitations to all the different government entities, be it Cook County, the Park District, the City. But I think because the program has a track record, it's never difficult to really get applications. As a matter of fact, we usually have more than we can accept in a class. And we also, I think the graduates themselves, by word of mouth, let other people know that this is a program that they ought to participate. So the program, so to speak, has a life of its own. And even though we do extend invitations, we do have people calling us, asking us, you know, when is the next class we're interested in applying? So it's not a difficult thing to recruit. Is there a limit to the size of each class? Usually we try and limit the class to 25 participants because it's, one of, it's a very interactive class and we really want to try and keep it to 25 for that reason. We want people to get to know each other and to feel comfortable and to really learn and allow them to be able to ask questions so that we try and keep the class size to a minimum of 25 participants. And uh, Gwenda, mm -hmm. could you tell us something of the makeup of the current class that will be starting on October 7th? The current class is a very good mix. Um, we have people from city agencies and we ha also have a number of people from other agencies such as the Cook County, um, the the Chicago Housing Authority. Um, we have participants from the Water Reclamation District and also a participant from the city colleges. Um, so we have a good mix of managers representing um, various agencies in government. Um, we also have a good mix in terms of the diversity factors, you know, male and female. And um, as a matter of fact, 48% um, of our class is female. And we have a um, uh, good perspective in terms of the, the length of time that managers have been in those positions. So we have a very good mix. Dave, the fact that 48% of the class is female, and uh, Maritza mentioned networking, 
Do you want to comment on uh, how you took advantage <laughs> of that particular situation when you were in the program in 1991? You mean the dating service that you offer to the program? <laughs> uh, well, uh, this is kind of unusual, but uh, uh, there was a, a young lady in the budget department that I had kind of had my eye on related to uh, being very attractive, very intelligent person, and it, I saw her, I met her a few times, but she wouldn't pay any attention to me. Um, and then uh, in, in your class, uh, we got to know each other, worked on a project team together, and it, it, you really get to know people very well. Um, and I made a lot of friends and eventually uh, uh, asked this young woman out, and uh, about a year later, she became my wife. So uh, that was uh, kind of a distinct honor. And uh, uh, But you really get to know someone in a different way because uh, just you, you learn working styles, you learn a lot about your personality and, and, and your traits. and. Uh, and we got along very well, and we worked on a major project together through your, through your class. And if you can work together, I think you can probably uh, get, up, get on in life pretty well together. Maritza, is the time commitment of a participant in the class a, a significant commitment on their behalf? How long is the program? I believe the program 16 is weeks. 16 weeks, and um, there is a very st strong time commitment involved. Uh, people are told up front when they be come to the program that it really is mandatory they attend and um, they are required to be there because otherwise they really aren't going to benefit if they aren't able to. And one of the problems you have and one of the reasons we have to make it almost mandatory that they be there is because of the level that these people are at in government. Lots of times they find it difficult to get away, they get called. And we try and minimize that and say, when you leave your office, you know, you're going to come here and we're going to concentrate on what's going on here. But we let them know that they must attend. And, and Glenda, what is a typical day's program like? Could you just sort of run us through what a typical day for an executive development participant might be like? I'm not sure if there's a typical day, but we have um, a mix of training and, and, and development methods. Uh, we may have a uh, mini lecture which would also be followed by a small group discussion where they will talk about the information that's presented and how it applies to the government setting and come to some understanding of how they can use it in their own work lives. Um, other sessions we may have uh, a guest speaker come in to do a presentation and we have uh, guest speakers from the public sector as well as from other areas in which uh, managers are involved, government managers are involved with. And um, uh, another key component of the program would be uh, the time they would spend working on group projects. That's one of the requirements is to participate in a group project of some importance to government and to come up with recommendations for improvements in government services. In fact, we asked uh, each of the participants to talk to their department head or occasionally the mayor's office or the president of the county board mm -hmm. or of the water reclamation district or any of the other governments that are represented if they would like to have the participants in the class uh, act as a research team for a project that perhaps they don't have the necessary resource either human resource financial resource or resource of time to direct attention to and sometimes our people work then um, in concert with the mayor's office or the president of the county board's office or any of the other executive offices of the various departments represented in the program. Um, the class meets 16 to 18 times um, for an entire full day session. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the class meets typically on Thursdays for uh, consecutive weeks. Um, we do have, you know, bright breaks for holidays and the like. Um, also, a part of the class structure is a three-day residential workshop in which the class gets an opportunity to uh, further come together as a group and it's an opportunity to sort of let your hair down and be comfortable, but it's also a time for intensive work because the groups are working on their individual projects during the, the time of the workshop. And um, so it gets to be very challenging for participants. 
in the sense that they have to maintain their workload on their jobs as well as participating in this 16 weeks program. Um, Ritza, you mentioned that one of the real benefits of the program was cutting through red tape mm -hmm. and networking. Mm -hmm. um, can you give us some examples of in your own career where this has been so positively beneficial for you? And well, off the top of my head, um, sure. I recall that one of the people that w was in my class was the paymaster of the city, and whenever and I was the director of personnel for a city department. And whenever I had any major payroll problems, it was easy just to call him, have him be able to respond to whatever uh, problems I may have. It might be difficult to do that otherwise. Or, you know, I think another benefit of the program is that when things cross a, a, in, along or cut across government lines where you might need county help or you may need uh, the park district on a project that one may be working on, it's, it's good to be able to call a fellow classmate and even if they can't help you directly, they can refer you to the proper person. So I think the networking is really an important part of the program. You learn a lot about city government. You get the global view, which you wouldn't get otherwise. I mean, you get to know what, how the county operates, how the park district operates, how the city operates, and how all of them are interrelated. So um, I think that uh, Networking is one of the more important things that you will be able to use on your job whenever problems arise. I think this being able to understand how the different government agencies operate is terribly important because the ultimate consumer uh, simply sees people in the public sector as a public servant. Mm -hmm. They frequently don't think of you as a forest preserve employee or a park district employee or a city of Chicago employee. They're only interested in whether whatever service they're seeking to access is available to them with a minimal amount of disruption cost uh, and this allows us as you said to get away from the parochial picture and really adopt a, a global perspective I can they, give you a quick example uh, when I went over to work for the Cook County Forest Preserve um, we had a there was a sewer main that broke in one of the forest preserves and the sewer department came in and and fixed it, but they had to take down a lot of trees. And and uh, in order to reforest that, I um, I called up uh, one of the contacts, one of my classmates, uh, who was uh, a higher up in the sewer department, and we were able to work on that problem. And that's uh, so it's one thing to call from uh, city agency to city agency, but it's nice to be able to call from a county agency to a city. Uh, to get a problem resolved, and I think that's a real benefit. Mm -hmm. And another feature of the class format, we have um, at each session uh, t a time set aside where uh, several uh, people will give a, what we call an agency report, where they will talk about the uh, global mission uh, objectives of their particular agency or department, and then they will also talk to about the specific challenges and opportunities that they have, that they're faced with. And so you get an idea of what it really is like in a particular department. And that information helps you in terms of accessing the department and being able to work with them when you have a specific project or work assignments that you have to uh, deal with. And, and so that's, that's another opportunity in which that interaction and that networking occurs. It's, mm -hmm. it's sort of designed or structured into the program as well as the informal t uh, ties and, and relationships that are developed by... Such as marriages. Yeah, so, it's 16 so weeks of interacting. <laughs> well, you noticed we did move your name tags closer and closer together. So <laughs> you two were able to sit closer to each other each week, but uh, perhaps just as significantly is the fact that people do get an opportunity to learn about their own particular management style as well as others and supervisory styles. Mm -hmm. and, and about diversity in the workplace too. Well that was my question. Mm -hmm. Over 25 years, how do we manage to keep a program like this uh, dynamic? How do we manage to keep it vibrant and alive and, and prevent stagnation? Because it seems that this is a successful formula that mm -hmm. the City Department of Personnel has and the City Colleges in partnership with personnel uh, we, we have a successful formula where we now offer two programs a year in its inception, I believe, for 
perhaps the first decade, we offered one program a year so that only 25 managers were able to become better managers. Now we offer two groups a year so that we can perhaps have as many as 50 managers. Um, Maritza, how? I think uh, one of the reasons you keep it so fresh is because we get a lot of input from the participants. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, they criticize and they also uh, approve of what we do so that if there's something that they don't think is useful to them, they'll let you know. And at the end, you, we really try to get input from them on what would they like to ha see offered in the next class. What, where can we make improvements? So that feedback is very important and I think it's one of the reasons we're able to keep things fresh and why it changes all the time. I mean, as mentioned uh, yesterday when we were talking, you said that TQM was uh, an area that really wasn't dealt with five years ago and now is one of the main areas that we look at as part of the 16 weeks. So that we tr really try and keep up with what's going on out there in management and teaching those techniques to our managers so that they can be better managers. Gwenda, would you like to uh, add something to what Maritza said about uh, keeping the program dynamic as one of the co-directors currently, and uh, we work together on this? Our participants have no problem with challenging us as directors to really meet their needs, and they will let us know, and we ask them what do they want in terms of development, and at, at the end of each program, we do a uh, and a, a formal evaluation is, and also, which is a written component, we also do an oral evaluation and we use that input from the people uh, about how we can enhance the program and we do this on an ongoing basis. As we get feedback during the course of the program, we make adjustments and the like. And so we're tr constantly trying to give new, uh, uh, give, bring in new information, new ideas, and to uh, stay fresh. In fact, Maritza mentioned TQM and total quality management. Mm -hmm. Dave, you've been involved with a total quality management uh, project. That's right. You want to say a little sure. bit about yeah, it? Sure. Why don't you well, tell us a bit about this? Total quality management is kind of a buzzword. It's a yeah. corporate buzzword. I don't know how much it means to people, but it's really customer service, facing, uh, solving problems on, based on data by analyzing your problems. And really the key or the cornerstone is to uh, empower your, your uh, rank and file, so to speak, your frontline people to problem solve. To not just come in with a, with a pre-baked um, solution, but to ask the people that are dealing with the client or the taxpayer, the citizen on the front lines, what are the, what are the key issues as you see it? And have, so it's really a bottom up as well as a top down kind of management structure. And it's been very successful in Japan, and, and uh, because um, a statistician brought it over, over after World War II, a guy named Deming, and it's now being used in corporate America and now in government. And this whole idea of reinventing government that the uh, current uh, president has uh, uh, is really based on this. At the Forest Preserve, what we're doing is we're working uh, uh, with, a, with the Government Assistance Project, the foundation, uh, in town that's, that's assisting um, in working with the city and city colleges uh, to work on a total quality project. And our process that we want to improve is the way in which the Forest Preserve uh, handles the public in terms of their uh, inquiries for information, their problems, and their requests. And we want to make uh, uh, the Forest Preserve more visitor friendly, a more accessible um, uh, resource for the public so people can get information quickly, what happens uh, to phone calls, the letters, uh, to uh, requests for service, and we're, we're examining comprehensively that process. Very good. Mm -hmm. um, maybe we could say a few words about the project aspect of the participants in the program. Each of the participants joins a team of four or five other members. Um, they tend to self-select their teams. Uh, they tend to arrive at a, a subject matter through some discussion where one has to convince their fellow um, teammates that an inordinate amount of research time and writing time uh, is worthy of directing their attention to. Um, Gwenda, do you have any comments about the projects? What sort of projects have the groups worked on over the years? Uh, hopefully they're not gathering dust in some library. 
there have been some really interesting projects that have come out of the research that the groups have done. We've had projects that focused on how to bring more revenue into the city. Um, as a matter of fact, um, in the late 70s and early 80s, we had two different projects that talked about um, possibilities for casinos or gambling uh, for mm -hmm. the city. But there have been other kinds of uh, projects that talk about uh, increased productivity and how to um, manage our revenue sources more effectively efficiently and effectively. We've had a project that dealt with uh, duty disability and how to uh, turn people who may be um, off the payrolls now, how to bring them back into the workforce and to make them uh, 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 feeling more productive in, in terms of their lives. And, and we've had other kinds of projects. We have many projects, yeah. Wendell, and I, I hate to cut you short, but we are out of time. We have been discussing the Intergovernmental Executive Development Program of the Harold Washington College. Harold Washington College is one of the city colleges of Chicago and offers many exciting classes and programs for people who are interested in furthering their education. If you would like to get more information about the opportunities at Harold Washington College, call area code 312-553-5600. I would like to thank our guests, Maritza Marrero, First Deputy Commissioner of Personnel for the City of Chicago, David Eubanks, the Chief Greenway Planner of the Cook County Forest Preserve District, and Gwenda Pulpis, the Co-Director of the Intergovernmental Executive Development Program and Principal Personnel Analyst. I have enjoyed hosting this program on your city colleges. I am Dr. Edward Mazur. Thank you for joining us. College offers a full array of foreign language courses. For more information, call Washington College at 553-5870. Channel 20 WICC-TV brings you these interesting programs on Monday evening. Once, when I was young, your William Penn came to our province and invited us to America. He told us of a just land, free of war and hunger, where skilled and industrious people could help build a new society. Gloria y Carlos han desaparecido. Nadie los ha visto. ¿Y Carlos se fue así? ¿No te dio ninguna explicación? No, ninguna. ¿No lo has visto esta mañana? No, no he visto ni a Carlos ni a Gloria. The emphasis is on the development of long-term relationships between buyer and seller, the kind of relationships that can only be built on mutual respect and trust. And for many salespeople, the key to creating this trust often depends on their willingness and ability to provide superior ongoing service. Look for these programs Monday night on Channel 20, The American Adventure at 6, Destinos at 6.30, and the sales connection at 7. Hello, I am Eileen Chapla-Galesco, General Manager of WYCC-TV Channel 20. Thanks to all of you who have written in response to our request for feedback. We have received so many positive comments about our... Burn your decree when you turn to 20 on your TV. You are watching WYCC-TV, Channel 20, Chicago. Welcome to 
to your city colleges. I am Cynthia Perry, Dean of Student Services at Truman College. In this program, we will be discussing some exciting programs that will help prepare Truman graduates for the 21st century. My guests are Dr. James Tullis, Professor of Biology, Dr. Elena Mulcahy, Director of the Ventures in Science program, and Dr. Donald Socek, Professor of Chemistry. Hello, everybody. We're gathered here today to talk about some very interesting programs at Truman that we would like to share with our viewing public. I think the issue that most, most importantly would grab the attention of, of anybody who's thinking about going to college or going back to college would be, are there any jobs out there for me? Are there any jobs out in the world where I can have an interesting profession, an interesting career, and be compensated for it? And I think two of the programs that I've learned about at Truman are, are, are readying many, many of our students at Truman and students from all over the city for an interesting future. Don, I'd like you to begin by sharing with us um, the program that you, to a large degree, developed yourself, the Chemical Technology Program. What would a chemical technology degree at Truman, an associate's degree, what would that allow a student to do? Uh, the chemical technology program at Truman uh, prepares a student for employment in the chemical industry, but the chemical industry is really very broad-based, and so it allows them to work in laboratories in virtually any industry that's involved in manufacturing, whether it's in manufacturing of chemicals, per se, or in, let's say, the food industry, mm -hmm. such as uh, craft. We have people who are working at craft or uh, let's say the personal care industry. We have a number of people working at Helene Curtis in the laboratories there. Mm -hmm. um, they do testing of raw materials, mm -hmm. chemical and physical testing. Uh, they do uh, testing of finished products. Uh, they uh, you know, test the effect, let's say, of a shampoo on uh, the structure of hair, or the mm -hmm. uh, bounce of a curl, uh, things along those lines. Uh, at uh, food processing companies, they may uh, test the chemical composition of a cheese product or a mayonnaise or something along those lines. So this is, this is a, um, a degree, an associate's degree, that would allow you to get an immediate employment with a lot of possibilities down the road for um, different ex work experiences. What do you actually study in the chemical technology program? What types of subjects will you, would you study? Uh, essentially, it's uh, the first two years of a uh, chemistry curriculum that could lead to a uh, baccalaureate degree in chemistry. Mm -hmm. uh, you are going to be studying a general education core, first mm -hmm. of all, uh, where you'll be taking a full year of college English, and then uh, courses in social studies and uh, humanities. Mm -hmm. uh, those, of course, are the general education courses, but uh, the technological courses essentially are in chemistry. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to take uh, a full year of college chemistry, a full year of organic chemistry, and then a variety of uh, analytical chemistry courses, and then the uh, requisite math courses that lead into those. So actually with an associate's degree you could go to work, and um, in, in any of the manufacturing fields or in the research fields you've talked about, but you could also take your two-year degree and transfer to a university if you had um, hopes for a um, an advanced degree like an engin uh, chemical engineering or something like that. So the courses that you take would have many applications for a future mm -hmm. for, well, for yeah. a student. Excuse me. The uh, program was designed to uh, transfer mm -hmm. uh, intact all of the hours and many of our students who are working now as uh, associate graduates are uh, continuing their education uh, part-time at uh, Northeastern UIC uh, pursuing baccalaureate programs also. So the chemical technology um, technician is, is certainly um, a program that, that um, has a lot of, a lot of advantages. But Truman has another new program that I think uh, kind of runs parallel to the chemical technology program, but takes a little bit of a different turn. And Jim, I, we have talked uh, recently about the biotech program. Um, and you mentioned to me uh, a kind of an interesting profession that would be a, um, a, an out um, an extension of that, and that was the forensic biotechnician. Now, what is a forensic biotechnician? Well, actually, this is just a field of biotechnology where primarily the student or the graduate would be working 
in areas where authorities are investigating various um, criminal activity perhaps oh, and okay. also uh, it would be used in identification of the missing persons and what is actually done is to uh, use the DNA to help identify these people or help um, the authorities to understand what happens at a crime scene so or if you find some mysterious uh, some mysterious substance at the crime scene, a biotechnician then would, his job or her job would be to analyze it for its composition and, and maybe match it up with the top witness at the crime. Perhaps. So, yes. there's, so there's, a, there's certainly a lot of drama in, in, the, uh, in the application of your biotech degree there. Um, what other areas, what other important areas um, that, are, that are taking us into the next century that a biotechnician might be involved with? Well, uh, in uh, Illinois especially, it would be agriculture biotechnology, and also you'd find uh, positions in food industry, clinical work. Environmental, in, in environmental yes, areas? Yes, in, in the environmental area, certainly. Mm. It's such a wide area. Uh, there are a number of positions that the student or well, the graduate would be able to take once they finish the program. So the biotechnology program would be like the chemtechnology program. It's a two-year associate's degree program in which you would take your general education courses in addition to um, a number of biology courses. Would there be any other courses required in that curriculum? Yes, actually we have um, three new courses that we've put into the program biotechnologies one two and three we have the numbers there and um, the other thing is we have a new course in what we call um, advanced microbiology mm -hmm. well actually it's it's a kind of a industrial microbiology one that the students have hands-on experience and that essentially is the only courses that's the only courses that we've added to the program the other courses are there in place for example we have them take cell biology mm -hmm. uh, there's another microbiology mm -hmm. and uh, many of our students have taken a lot of the prerequisite courses for already. this program already already so um as we think about the these two very rewarding careers which pay very well um, with only an associate's degree. One of the problems that comes to mind is how prepared our students are who are entering Truman College in these fields. Obviously um, in the chemistry technology field you'd have to have some background hopefully in chemistry coming out of high school. You'd hope to have some math background, uh, possibly some even some physics background. And one of the problems that, that we're faced with in, in, in looking over our very, very international and multicultural enrollment at Truman is that many of our students are coming from the, um, either coming from foreign countries or coming from uh, city schools where they don't get a really solid background in chemistry or biology. Um, I'm been, been made aware of, of, a, of a program called Tech Prep. And we hear the term Tech Prep mentioned a lot in the academic circles uh, in the city colleges. Um, Don, you've been involved in the Tech Prep program. Uh, tell me how that helps the student who comes to our door who may be attracted to your programs or Jim's program, but just doesn't have the background, isn't prepared. Uh, the Tech Prep uh, initiative uh, is uh, at Truman part of uh, what's called the, uh, uh, funded by what's called the Perkins Grant, mm -hmm. uh, which is a federal program, which a portion of it uh, deals with uh, technical education, uh, starting with preparation in the high schools and then uh, smoothly going through to uh, education in community colleges and then ultimately going on for a baccalaureate program. What we've done with this program at Truman College is uh, be in contact with uh, Chicago high schools. Mm -hmm. And we've been specifically in seven Chicago high schools. And what we are doing is working with the uh, high school instructors and counselors to um, work on their curriculum.
for their last two years of high school, uh, such that uh, they are prepared then to go directly into the Truman Technological Programs, uh, specifically in this case the Chemtech Program, such that they can start off with the college-level college material uh, mm -hmm. immediately. Uh, and we are in the process of doing that now. We're working on curriculum development for the high schools uh, as early as their uh, sophomore year so that they're prepared at their junior year to mm. begin taking the uh, chemistry, physics, and advanced math courses that they will need in order to directly start the program and finish then in two years. Uh, the tech prep uh, goes under a jargon of a two plus two program, meaning the last that. two years of high school and then two years of community college. And then they are uh, finished as associate graduates. And our next step in this program is to uh, develop articulation agreements then with the uh, four-year colleges so we can add a two plus two plus two uh, aspect where the second two years is in the uh, baccalaureate program. So what you're really saying is there have to, we have to keep those lines of communication open to the high schools, working science faculty with science faculty so that the curriculum that the student would get in the high school would dovetail right into the curriculum that would be in place at the college. So the student doesn't come to the door totally behind in terms of what is expected of that student to pursue the chemical tech program or the biotech program. Mm -hmm. So um, opening those lines of communication, I think, is one of the most exciting things that I have been hearing about and would certainly enable a high school student to have access to some of these interesting jobs that, that are, are out there that they may not know about. The, um, the, the issue of the, the, of the underprepared student or the underrepresented student um, in the science field has become a, um, a kind of an important topic um, at Truman College. As you know, Truman College, from your experiences, is, is um, a very broad, um, multi-ethnic based student body. We have um, well represent, highly, high representations of students who are Hispanic, students who are African American, students who um, are Asian, as well as having um, a very, very large um, number of students who are, who are born in foreign countries. So they're coming at our college um, at very, very different levels of, of, of preparedness, but great desire to, to get ahead. Um, but the underrepresentation of, of certain of our groups in the science field has been a, 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 of a very um, interesting concern at the college. And um, Elena, your program, I believe, has, has really just nipped, I'm not sure if it's nipped it in the <laughs> bud, but it's certainly going after nipping the problem in the bud. Tell us about the, the, the impetus and the thrust of the Ventures in Science program. I'd be happy to, Cynthia. Actually, the sequence is a little bit turned around because you started out talking about what happens as you get your associate's degree. And this program actually reaches into the elementary school. Oh. And we recruit students um, that are still in eighth grade, about to graduate, and we recruit them for our summer program to be followed on Saturdays uh, throughout the regular school year so that we have students um, from underrepresented minority groups, or I should say, minority groups that are underrepresented in math and science professions. So those are the students that we go after. Mm -hmm. um, we tell them about our summer program in which they will have five weeks of a full day program that includes uh, math and science, language arts, ESL, because some of our students are limited in English proficiency. We have uh, counseling and we have um, physical education so that we have a full day program for the students during the summer one day is devoted to wonderful exciting field trips and we do have a great time because the purpose of the program is to stimulate interest and prepare students for math and science professions but we do it in a holistic way i hope um, mm -hmm. we integrate all of the activities under a main theme which is um, in the case of our program for the past uh, year and a half has been ecology mm. so we interest these students in um, illinois the Illinois Rivers Project, uh, in which they go out and test uh, the waters in the Illinois River um, and come to some conclusions about how uh, viable our waterways are. And we follow that up with activities in math and science that support that and reports that are written on um, the Macintosh mm -hmm. so that they have a variety of things that they can do with the information. Um, uh, 
I'd like to mention some of the things that we do. We have gone on a um, canoe trip down the Chicago River so that the students can not only get out in the city environs, but in a nature atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And um, so we went down the river uh, exploring what you can do and what you can see. Of course, it was very safe, and everybody had their life jackets on, and um, we only had a couple of uh, <laughs> mishaps where some of the children, students actually, um, overturned their canoes. However, the water was waste high and uh, it was all part of the it fun. It wasn't high with waste, it was no. waste high. <laughs> well, both, perhaps. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but then subsequently, after that kind of adventure, we did go back and with the Friends of the Chicago River, devoted a Saturday to clean up. Mm. And uh, it was amazing what we found in the Chicago River. Uh, huge canisters, a shopping cart, uh, all sorts of debris. Uh, so that we're trying to create awareness in the students about the ecology, but at the same time uh, teaching them math and science concepts. The idea is to provide them with support and incentive so that they will take more math and science in high school. We're talking about regular students that normally don't think of themselves as being candidates for professions or for careers in math and science. Mm -hmm. So that our Saturday program, which um, uh, is also a full day program. We devote some time to helping them with their homework, making sure that they're staying up in, uh, at level in their classes, and we make sure that the programs that they've taken in high school are appropriate so that they have some choices. The idea is to increase their choice, and we do that through um, incorporating some teachers from the Chicago Public Schools and some teachers from, uh, from Truman College so that the students have an interesting environment. They have a program in which um, they receive help and a lot of moral support. Our idea is to take these students, the same groups of students. We now have a class of sophomores that have been with us since they graduated from eighth grade and a new class of freshmen. And the idea is to take them throughout their four years of high school. This, of course, is always dependent on the availability of funds, <laughs> kind of an important subject. Mm -hmm. The program is um, funded primarily through the Department of Energy, but also receives support from some other uh, foundations, the Berry Side Foundation, Motorola, Waste Management. So we try to interest Chicago area uh, entities in mm -hmm. the program and um, are very careful that our students have an awareness of what they need to do in order to make the program, or make themselves successful uh, through choices that, that they discover. Well, I think that was one of the interesting things about learning about the Ventures in Science program is that it's, it's directed toward, toward high school students or eighth grade students, right. high school level students, average students, not necessarily science whizzes, but people who might be interested in, in enriching their experience in the science and math direction and, uh, and may become scientists and may not. I think the, the, the richness of, of this Ventures in Science program also speaks to the fact that um, many of the programs that, that we have in place at our college, and I'm sure other colleges have as well, uh, are, are drawn from uh, the National Science Foundation or uh, state agencies or private entities. And it really takes the creativity of the, of the faculty or the, of the enterprising person to say, why don't we make this happen? And uh, I think the Ventures in Science program is a very good example of, of, of pulling together um, various private entities uh, to say, let's do something for these kids. And uh, it's in place at Truman. Uh, the Ventures in Science students are high school students. They don't really stand out so much from the college students necessarily, but they're there every Saturday um, studying science in a way that hopefully it'll become part of their lives. Cynthia, could I comment on that? Because I think it's very important for people to know that these students, by the way, I wouldn't categorize them as being average. I think that they're absolutely extraordinary, wonderful human beings, and they know how I feel about them. <laughs> and uh, they think of themselves as definitely going on to higher education. They are. There is no, they are there is no, we, we make that assumption. If you are, you're so special that you're in this program, then of course you're going on to wonderful 
things uh, later in life. But I would like to mention that these students come to Truman College voluntarily, mm -hmm. that we do not offer them advanced placement, we do not offer in high school, nor do they get um, any kind of credit for right. the program. Right. What they do, they come there because they want to be there. Um, they like the program, they like the faculty, they like the friends that they make because they're students from all over the, the north city. side mm -hmm. high schools. Mm -hmm. I would say concentrating on the north side high schools, although certainly other students could participate. But they do come there because they want to, and I know that the model of the Japanese system where students take on a lot more hours of education, this is happening with these students. They, they come it. for five weeks during the summer, and they come for Saturdays during the regular school year. So that's a lot of extra How schooling. That that Saturday? How long do they, they come on for Saturday? From then? 9 to 2. Yeah, a whole day. A whole day. So programs like Ventures in Science um, with the inspired and, and tenacious leadership of people like Elena Mulcahy uh, are really uh, make us very proud at Truman um, in some of the uh, programs that bring students up to speed. Um, and my, from my experience in discussing with our, our science faculty, our, our, our physical science and engineering faculty, our biology faculty and chemistry faculty, if you catch them in the hall, they'll tell you about a new grant that they just applied for or what a new grant they hope to get. Um, Harriet Klinger from our um, department is, uh, our physical science department has uh, just informed us that she has um, gotten a grant to, to set up a satellite on the roof of Truman so that we can collect weather reports and the collecting of weather reports and an analyzing weather reports will be incorporated into the physical science curriculum for non-science majors. So, so taking, uh, taking our students where they are or trying to, to encourage them to, to stretch into the directions um, of the science and technology area, which is clearly um, the exciting aspect of turning into the 21st century and taking advantage of grants that are available Ingenuity are, are kind of the exciting things that, that I, I see happening in the Truman College um, science area. Um, if, uh, if you were to say uh, one thing uh, about um, what you're most proud of um, in the uh, chemical technology program, Don, what might be your, what would be your thumbnail uh, aspect? What are you most proud of, of how the program works or what it does? How would you summarize that? Well, I think uh, foremost is providing jobs for the students. Okay. Uh, it's High on their extremely, list. Extremely uh, gratifying good jobs. when you provide a good job for a student. And quite often we work with the students in placing them. Uh, we have a very active uh, industrial advisory board who mm -hmm. comes to us when they have openings. Mm. And. Um, well, they just they come is, right to you. It's uh, like a placement service. Yeah, it's, it's informal, but uh, yet it's in place. And uh, it's uh, extraordinary when you have students who have uh, never had a job before, uh, who uh, have not been able to afford an automobile, and then suddenly overnight uh, they have a job that is paying them 25, perhaps $28,000 a year um, as a uh, full-time job with full benefits. Lots of and uh, the response of the students is extraordinary and very gratifying. Uh. Jim, what are, you, what are you most excited about? The biotech program just got off. We just got it approved in Springfield, so this is our first semester with it. But what are your expectations, or what are, your, what are you excited about as far as... Well, I think the best thing about this program, it was developed from the start, along with the private sector. They attended our meetings, and the development of certain courses also was a partnership with the private sector. So they know what to expect from our students, and now our students know what to expect from the employers. It was no ivory tower. It's it wasn't no built in tower. an ivory tower. It was <laughs> built down on the ground with, with, uh, with everybody. But the important thing is that they have good job prospects. Uh, it sounds like a very diverse... You could be in the, in the medical field, you could be in the environmental field, you could be in the crime field, uh, crime prevention field. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I'm excited about it, and I'm the Dean of Students, and I rarely see students who are concentrating in the science and uh, technology fields, or d that is not our primary, our primary interest, but I'm very excited about uh, the new programs at Truman and, and the, the real science thrust that is, seems to be forming at Truman um, and makes it uh, one of the most attractive features, I think, 
um, that is uh, a newly emerging aspect of the, the uh, variety of courses and programs that, that we're offering at Truman College. Um, any surprises, Elena, in, in terms of how your program has gone? Anything that you're surprised about uh, your students in the way that they surprised you? Well, uh, how, I are can't they as, say, how are they I as researchers? <laughs> how are they well, as. Well, uh, um, I. Because one of the things that we're going to find out, because we have a, a lot of exciting ideas, it's wonderful because um, uh, I think everybody in the program is receptive to doing new things. So that we're hoping that we can. Um, create uh, a program where the students go out and learn how to do energy audits oh. and so that that will that will be uh, not only something that will increase their awareness lifelong their lifelong awareness of energy problems but will give them some hands-on experience but I wish that you'd ask me the other question about what I'm most proud about what are you most proud about? <laughs> thank you <laughs> uh, I'm proud of the fact that the students are proud of being in the program. Uh -huh. They like being there. The faculty likes being part of the team. Um, it's, it's creative. It's fun. And the thing that I'd have to mention is that we appear to be doing our job. Our, our evaluation, we do very careful evaluation and following of the students. And um, it appears that the students that have been in the program for a while now are starting to differentiate from their uh, control group that we do, we have a, um, an ongoing evaluation of both our students and a control group of students who were, who applied for the program, but there just simply wasn't enough room. So um, it seems that our students are starting to do better in terms of grade point average, in terms of rank, in terms of attendance, and in terms of um, lack of tardies. At, in their regular high schools. Right. So I'm not talking about how they do in the program, but how they do in their high schools. Well, that's exciting. I'm sorry. We're out of time. We've been discussing the biotech, chemtech, and the ventures in science programs of Truman College. Truman College is one of the city colleges of Chicago and offers many exciting classes and programs for people who are interested in furthering their education. If you would like more information about the opportunities at Truman College, please call area code 312-878-1700. I would like to thank our Truman College guests, Dr. Jim Tullis, Professor of Biology, Dr. Elena Mulcahy, Director of the Ventures in Science Program, and Dr. Donald Socek, Professor of Chemistry. I have enjoyed hosting this program on your city colleges, and I'm Cynthia Perry. Thank you for joining us. WYCC TV offers a variety of programs for our viewers. Caregivers can include virtually anyone, not just the birth parents and their immediate relations. In fact, the circle of people with whom the children can form relationships and feel secure may be larger than in many urban societies. Those who chose to run began with the conviction, instilled by a group of consultants, close advisors, and well-wishers, that they could succeed. They also had some name recognition, experience in public.
Mystery Visions is a production of Maryland Public Television. Funding for this program was provided by the Annenberg CPB Project. For more information on the college telecourse, video cassettes, off-air videotaping, and books based on literary visions, call 1-800-LEARNER. This is PBS. The Office Technology Program, offered through the City Colleges of Chicago, offers an intensive 16-week training program designed to provide word processing, spreadsheet operations, and job search skills to qualified and highly motivated individuals. For more information, call 368-8842. You are watching WYCC-TV, Channel 20, Chicago. Welcome to your city colleges. I'm Jim Tillman of WMAQ-TV. We'll be discussing the Daily College Aviation Maintenance Technology Program offered at Daily College, one of the city colleges of Chicago. I've served on the advisory board of the Cornelius Coffee Foundation, the organization that funds scholarships for the Daily College Aviation Maintenance Technology Program, and as a captain with American Airlines. Uh, this exciting program at Daily College prepares students for careers in aviation. And my guests are Paul Gunter, placement manager for the American Airlines Maintenance Ca Academy, Valerie Hampton, a student of the Daily College Aviation Maintenance Technology Program, and Shirley Kanazi, Dean of Skills and Manufacturing Technology Programs. I'll start with you, Paul. Uh, how did this all get started? Well, Jim, in the late 1980s, uh, the industry saw a need or a shortage of maintenance technicians in the future. So through that industry, uh, American Airlines had saw the need here in the Chicago area to place a school in which we could get a labor pool of qualified technicians. And what we've done is we've looked at the industry as a whole, looked at the educational backgrounds that are required, and looked at the government requirements that were necessary. And by pooling all these three together, we have uh, created a partnership. And the partnership is with Richard J. Daly College and the American Airlines Maintenance Academy, which is now a subsidiary uh, of the AMRTCG um, Corporation, which is part of American Airlines. Well, now, when you talk about maintenance technology for most people, you're talking mechanics. Is that right? Uh, Aviation mechanics? Not only mechanics, but we like to look at them as more as technicians. Really, the nomenclature has changed to include technicians, which really include a wide variety of job skills, not just a wrench turner. These are 